So this is the case for um, complete uh, thyroidectomy when we have papillary carcinoma. And first of all, uh, in the background, we always know the Korean uh, um, kind of paradox where they have a very high rise in papillary carcinoma with no change in mortality, and which is all probably related to screening with ultrasound and finding all these micro papillary carcinomas. But as uh, was stated, so there's a pendulum, and this is part of the pendulum shift, but we should all also all remember that really papillary carcinoma, some of them are uh, bad, show, show bad signs, and we'll see, we'll see in the next slides. So ju just a small, uh, we'll talk about the guidelines. I'll show you a disastrous case report. The advantages and disadvantages have been discussed. We'll talk about that a little more. We'll talk about the uh, contralateral lobe with papillary thyroid carcinoma and um, some outcome studies, which part of them have been shown already. So again, the recommendations, like it's been shown, the ATA guidelines from 2009 say that above a one centimeter uh, uh, carcinoma should have a total thyroidectomy. Um, the British Thyroid Association guidelines, which have been published July 2014, already are uh, less uh, uh, insistent on, to, on performing a total thyroidectomy, and they state that up, if, there's, if it's a low-risk patient from one to four centimeters, uh, can be considered a uh, lobectomy. And as I understand, though, I didn't see yet the full uh, uh, um, uh, draft, the new ATA guidelines are probably, are probably pretty similar. How about microscopic? So all of them agree that for less than one centimeter, uh, lobectomy is enough. And uh, just one caveat, children, all, also the new guidelines say that children should have a total thyroidectomy even for small, for small uh, cancers. So this is a case report that I want to present to you. It's a, pretty much an answer to the question. I mean, it's not an answer, but it's a, it may be an exception, but it's, it, it's, it, it lends uh, thought. So this patient in, was born 1952, 1994, when he was 42 years old. He underwent right hemithyroidectomy and kind of biopsy of the left uh, lobe, uh, and it was for a multinodular goiter, uh, and final histopathology was, as you can see, um, goiter, but with one microscopic focus of papillary carcinoma. So, uh, like we say to these patients today, follow up, and this patient presented 18 years later in 2012. We, all this whole time, he had a slowly growing mass in the left thyroid, but he didn't uh, go to any physician to show what happened to him. On January 2012, he presents with dyspnea strider, and we see this huge mass, which is involving the uh, uh, strap muscles. In, his vocal cords were normal, and FNA was malignant, but it didn't uh, tell us that it's, it didn't suggest an aplastic carcinoma. So uh, the patient underwent uh, uh, hemi or left completion thyroidectomy, and the final results was extensively multifocal and aplastic undifferentiated carcinoma in the background of um, papillary carcinoma. So this is a true case that was presented. The patient died after three years. So just to summarize, he had no bad signs, although it's true he's the exception, he's not the rule, but he was 42, no family history, well differentiated, no local invasion, the size was microscopic, no metastasis, full resection, and he still died from anaplastic thyroid carcinoma because of papillary carcinoma, which was not treated. So what's the rationale for total thyroidectomy? And we talked about that. First of all, there's up to 85%, though it's probably more in the 30 to 40% uh, um, of bilateral disease. Uh, and if we don't do it, we can have more recurrent uh, in the uh, same lobe or uh, in the same lobe if we don't do a radioiodine or in the contralateral lobe. We can screen much better with thyroglobulin. Uh, we don't need ultrasounds, um, although we, we use them. There is improved efficacy of radioactive iodine for all patients. We don't have to give uh, radioactive iodine before. And uh, um, there's less chance of reoperation in the neck, which can be difficult. So the case against, I'm not going to talk because because that's been shown very nicely before. So this, I, I just want to talk a little bit about consistency. As, as we said, for, for a small follicular neoplasm, 
The, this is according. This is the Bethesda, uh, the Bethesda system, and we're talking about if we have a tipia, we know we have a factor 15 percent. If we're talking about a follicular neoplasm, okay, a small follicular neoplasm, the the guidelines say surgical lobectomy. Now, what's the chance of a follicular neoplasm being a carcinoma? It's 15 to 30 percent. So we're saying when we have a 15 to 30 percent chance of cancer, resect that lobe. Okay, what's the chance for bilateral papillary thyroid carcinoma? 15 to 80% chance. So why are we thinking differently? And what, what is bilateral disease when we're talking about the disease in the second lobe? So most of us think that it's probably clonal expansion, one clone which has multiple papillary carcinomas. Another um, thing that was brought again by Wang in Human Pathology of 2010, that they showed that it's probably, at least some of it is metastasis to the contralateral lobe. And what can predict if we have bilateral, bilaterality? First of all, if it's multifocal, that's obvious. Age, very young patients uh, uh, have a higher chance of bilateral disease. Um, size, that's been uh, debated. Some didn't find a relation with size and bilaterally, some did. And how about ultrasound? Well, ultrasound, we might think if we found, like in the patient that's presented in the case uh, before, we find nodules on the contralateral side, so there's a higher chance for bilaterality, right? And if we don't have, if the ultrasound is completely normal on the other side, so then there's a low chance of bilateral disease. Well, I didn't find anything about that in the literature. I looked for it, so I just looked at a small example from our last year to see what, what goes on. So this is a small case, small series, 40 uh, patients with papillary thyroid carcinoma. Of them, 16 of them, 40% showed bilateral disease, okay? And looking just at those out of the 40, 11 had a normal uh, ultrasound in the contralateral lobe, and out, out of them, 5% had bilateral disease. So this shows us that ultrasound cannot uh, uh, rule out uh, bilateral, pa bilateral papillary thyroid carcinoma. Okay, the, just a few studies. So we know the classic study by Shah from 1993, which is uh, uh, from Memorial, which was a retrospective but matched pair analysis comparing total thyroidectomy to hemithyroidectomy, and they found a better survival in hemithyroid patients in 20 years versus total thyroid patients. So uh, just a few limitations for this study. Though it's matched pair, uh, the very few of the patients received radioactive iodine at that time because it's looking back from, I think, 1940. And there's no data in that study about recurrence and multiple surgeries, and there's a high selection bias, of course, because it's from one institution, and, and the institution usually would recommend lobectomy for these patients, so why would some people receive a total thyroidectomy? Probably because they had more severe disease. And even though it, it was matched pair, I mean, you wouldn't expect normally a 10% better survival in, just because a patient underwent thyroidectomy, total thyroidectomy. I mean, you, because the, he didn't undergo hemi, he underwent total. You wouldn't expect him to do so much worse and lose 10% 10, 10 after 20 years. So, well, of course, there's a selection bias here. And another problem, this is vastly underpowered. Just to show you a little bit of small power analysis, how many patients we would need to check. So to see between 70 and 80% for, with an 0.05 uh, um, significance, you would need, as we see here, just in the internet, I found 3,400 patients uh, for a good study. So 146 in a matched pair, yes. Yeah, so 146 is definitely underpowered. And actually, all the single institution studies are underpowered because of that. This is, uh, so there was the memorial experience in one side that they went for lobectomy. Most of the other hospitals in the United States at that time still uh, preferred total thyroidectomy. This is from other uh, uh, hospitals. This is Mazafieri. Uh, his results from 1994. And uh, he's looking at mortality. He showed that near total or total uh, thyroidectomy had less mortality uh, versus less than near total. And uh, uh, he also found less recurrences, 40% in the hemithyroidectomy versus 26% in the total thyroidectomy. This is another study from the Mayo Clinic, and there's, this is going over uh, from 1940 to 2000 with 2,500 patients. And again, mo uh, we're looking here at recurrence. We see more recurrence in the unilateral uh, lobectomy versus bilateral thyroidectomy, and also death. The only thing that did not show significance, though there is, it's a little bit worse, is uh, uh, mortality for Macy's less than six, so the very uh, uh, good 
uh, patient, those that have a very good prognosis, uh, they don't do much, much worse, though in recurrence, it did show a difference. This we talked about already, the National Cancer Database and, uh, uh, by Bill Moria, and they showed um, that tumor size, of course, has a, a major prognostic uh, um, uh, meaning. How, and, but they also show that total thyroidectomy patients had less recurrence than that, like we showed, like it's been shown already, and also uh, survival is better in that uh, database. The other side was the SEER database that has also been shown, so I don't want to talk about that that much. Just again, it's important to, to, to if, if one institution has selection bias, so just by combining many institutions, you're gonna get many institutions that have selection bias. You're not improving that problem. So of course you're gonna find that those that have a lobectomy, which are the better patients, are gonna do better, or at least not as bad as has been shown by Hagen Mendelssohn. This is an interesting article by uh, Dania Hirsch, which we'll talk later, but I think it's important in, in our discussion. Uh, this is a, from a study from Bellinson, and it's looking mainly at quality of life and how the patients do after a hemithyroidectomy. So they compared 60 patients that underwent hemithyroidectomy for papillary carcinoma versus 100 patients that underwent a total thyroidectomy. And they showed that regarding complications, so we say that there's more complications with total thyroidectomy, that was not the case in, this, in these patients, that out of those that had a hemithyroidectomy, there were um, two of them that had a recurrent laryngeal nerve injury and one patient that needed a completion because later the tumor recurred in the contralateral side, so he was hypocalcemic afterwards. So you have a 5% uh, in, both, in both groups. The interesting finding is that these, uh, these patients need many more ultrasounds because that's our only way of following up. So they have a one uh, um, ultrasound per year versus the others that have less than that. And they need more FNAs because we have the thyroid and sometimes and there, there's a nodule there that starts growing, so you need more FNAs. So um, we're not, it's not sure that their quality of life of these patients is much better. So you can say, well, they're at least they, have, they don't need to take the pill the l -thyroxine, but in that study, 70% needed uh, uh, l -thyroxine. Um So even the thyroid was not, the thyroid that was kept there did not function very well in most of these patients. So just to sum it up, for a, one cent, a, a tumor above one centimeter, uh, I think there's still not enough data to change the current paradigm not to do a total thyroidectomy. Uh, if we're doing a lobectomy only, we have to remember that there's at least a 30% chance that there is tumor in the contralateral lobe. And I mean, maybe in some areas, all these patients are followed up very well and you're not gonna lose them, but some places it's not like that. And to, and to go and say to all these low risk patients uh, to do a, hem a lobectomy could be a problem. Radioactive iodine treatment after lobectomy, as we said, could be a problem. And it's much easier just to take a thyroglobulin once every six months and to see what's going on. Complications, as we showed, are s at least in one study, are similar. Most of them say that there's a little more complications, but like we all know in good surgical hands, usually there's not many. To find a recurrent, bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve, which is the m main problem which we're talking about, uh, is very, very extremely rare and probably more related to uh, the tumor itself than to the uh, surgery. And maybe in the future where we have uh, uh, genetic testing and we'll know which will be the bad actors like patients, with, for example, with BRAF, so we can cherry pick the correct patients for total thyroidectomy. But I think now we're not at that stage yet. Thank you very much.